anyways, Zef, you've already explained how hundreds of thousands of worshipers would ritually cleanse themselves back at the Pool of Siloam before going up to God's holy mountain, worshiping at the temple. But there's just one problem. They had to get there somehow. Right. How did they get up and ascend to the temple? And that's the question that archeologists were asking back about a decade or so ago, which is now we know where the Pool of Siloam is. We know where the Temple Mount is. How did these hundreds of thousands of pilgrims who were going up to the Temple Mount and the pilgrimage festivals, how did they get there? So the archeologists widened the excavation. And what did they discover? They discover the very road that we are walking on now, the 2000 year old pilgrimage road that would have taken our ancestors. 2000 years ago, whether you're today Jewish or Christian, your ancestors would have walked on this road when they ascended to the temple that stood atop the Temple Mount. This is how they got there. This is how they got there. Amazing. 2,000 years ago during the second temple period, this is how worshipers went up to the holiest place in the world, That's right. the Temple Mount. And this also would have been outside. There would have been shops and homes around us. The road would have been much wider right. than it is today. And it's interesting that on the one hand, we're walking up the pilgrimage road. On the other hand, as we walked up the road, there are portions of the road that are cracked. I noticed that. And archeologists were trying to understand. First I thought, well, maybe they're ancient potholes, but they saw the cracks were evenly spaced as if somebody made those holes intentionally. And they couldn't figure out why, why would somebody do that? So they looked to the writings of the historian Josephus. And Josephus says in the year 70, Jerusalem is being destroyed. The temple is in flames. The last Jews of Jerusalem sought refuge from the Romans. Where? In the drainage channel directly beneath our feet. Wow, so the last holdouts of these people were uh, trying in vain, unfortunately, to hold out against the Romans who were looking to finish the job That's here right. in Jerusalem, and it was brutal. That's right, and the Romans, they find out about it, and they come with sledgehammers. They break open the road. They find the Jews hiding there. And then Josephus goes on to say that the Romans killed all 2,000 Jews they find there. They massacred them massacred. beneath where we're standing. That's right, right. and archeologists find Roman sword and scabbard, presumably one that was used to kill the last 2,000 Jews of Jerusalem. But that's not all they found here, Zev. Uh, on the road to pilgrimage, there were some more fascinating that's right. finds. That's right. In particular, two. Two coins that tell very different stories of what happened here. The first is a Roman coin. The most minted Roman coin to commemorate a victory. On one side of this coin, you see the Roman Emperor Vespasian, the year 71. On the other side of the coin, it says Judea Capta, and you have a Roman legionnaire standing above a Jewish woman on her knees crying. There's another coin that was discovered here, a much more humble coin, small bronze coin, and it says on it, on one side of the coin, in the year 70. On the other side of this coin, it says an ancient Hebrew script, Lecherut Zion, for the freedom of Zion. Zion, of course, being another name for Jerusalem. But scholars have long wondered, why were the Jews minting these coins? Because the coins themselves at that time were worthless. They had no monetary value. Now, the people who minted these coins, they probably thought maybe a few decades, maybe a century. They couldn't imagine it would be nearly 2,000 years. But here we are today, 2,000 years later, standing in the city of David, standing in Jerusalem, the capital of the Jewish state of Israel, standing today here, when there is a free Zion, a free Jerusalem, where people of all faiths and backgrounds, Jews, Christians alike, can come here and connect with the significance of Jerusalem. Zev, God is moving. The God of Israel is moving. And I don't see a Roman flag anywhere here around the city of David, but I do see the Israeli flag, the Star of David, the people of Israel live. The Romans are probably turning in their graves, but I think God Almighty is pretty happy right now. So that was number two, Zev. I don't know how you can top this. You've set the, the bar very high, but number one is coming up. I know you want to leave us in suspense. That's how you do it. Number one, folks, coming up after the break, do not move because the number one discovery, proving beyond a shadow of a doubt the Jewish ancient heritage here in the city of Jerusalem is coming up and you will want to have your Bible handy for this one. It's good stuff, stick around. It's the Watchmen, it's Christians United for Israel only right here on TBN from the amazing City of David.